Dreams. And uh, we're joined now by Zephyr Benkei. Zephyr, thank you very much for joining us. Are you there? Yes. Hello, Phil. It's my great pleasure. Thank you. It was great to talk to you, crescent-online.net. And um, we're going to throw you into the fire here because we have so much going on, on between Turkey, uh, at the Turkish-Syrian border. Yes, so, of course. So uh, let me ask you, so what is uh, the position of the various states there, what is Turkey trying to do, and are they going to get caught? What do you, what do you think is going to happen there? Well, I, I think um, Turkey uh, acted obviously not without NATO uh, knowledge because it's a member of NATO, um, and Turkey has had uh, a long-standing plan. Right from the beginning, the Turkish government has been demanding that uh, President Bashar al-Assad must go. That that has been one of their demands. Secondly, mm. they have also been talking about uh, creating a no-fly zone in that region along the border with uh, between Turkey and Syria. And uh, there are several reasons for that. Of course, the no-fly zone, uh, the, the Turks say it's meant to uh, house uh, refugees but oh that's, my gosh. that's not really, not really the <laughs> What <purpose>? refugee <laughs> would want to go? It would be like uh, setting yourself up to be destroyed. Exactly. What they really uh, uh, have in mind is that they want to use that zone to continue to supply weapons and other uh, goods, etc., to these terrorist groups. And there is also a uh, sp- Turkish-specific um, uh, project, and that is that they want to prevent uh, the Kurds that are residing in Syria uh, from linking up with the Kurds that are in Turkey, and in particular, uh, the PKK, which is the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, uh, Whose leader th- once lived in Damascus. Uh, that's correct, yes. You see, the Kurdistan Workers' Party has been uh, involved in a long-standing battle with the Turkish government. It it stretches to decades. Uh, But in 2012, uh, the Turkish government entered into um, negotiations to bring about peace. And, of course, an agreement was signed. But then, in last uh, June's uh, elections, parliamentary elections in Turkey, when the ruling AKP party lost its majority, then they, the Turkish government, uh, essentially uh, the president, uh, Tayyip Erdogan, uh, sort of uh, decided to play nasty. So mm-hmm. he started um, attacks on the Kurdish areas, although they were involved in peaceful negotiations, but yet he ordered his military and police forces etc., to attack the Kurds, and of course this created a reaction. Uh, Erdogan's plan was to create fear and uh, hate for the Kurds so that mm-hmm. in the November 1st elections he would be able to garner support. And as we know from the uh, election results, that he was uh, highly successful in that. Mm-hmm. But, of course, he has now got a problem with his Kurds. Mm-hmm. So what he's trying to do is to prevent the Kurds in Syria from linking up with the Kurds in Turkey so that uh, they would not create a bigger headache for him. So that's mm-hmm. his second objective. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, he, he obviously uh, has been pumped up uh, by the Americans and others that he's going to be the regional hegemon. And so he's sort of getting carried away with his, uh, his mm-hmm. uh, larger than uh, normal size mm-hmm. ego. Mm-hmm. And so he's uh, acting in this uh, totally irrational manner. Yeah. And can I ask you, who are the Turco men? Uh, and are they going to become a fact? Is some new argument going to break out over who they are? Well, the, the Turkoman, uh, you know, these, these are a Turkic group of people. In fact, the Turkic group of people are spread uh, all over the region, uh, both in Central Asia, in China, and even in, in Turkey. And, uh, sorry, in, even in Syria. And, of course, uh, Turkey claims that uh, since they are their ethnic cousins, therefore they are going to protect them wherever they may be. <clears throat> Humanitarian and, intervention. Exactly. And Turkey is simply using them as pawns. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, th- that you know, it's just a pretext that they are using. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, this they use as a justification to interfere in Syria. So that's one more excuse that they are advancing in order to 
uh, interfere in in Syria. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I want to point out that um, the 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 Turkish uh, downing of the Russian plane uh, was an illegal act because the Russian plane was entirely in Syrian airspace. Uh, Russian planes are operating in Syria with the knowledge and the agreement of the Syrian government unlike any of the other countries air forces whether the US Turkey or any other country mm-hmm. uh, that they are acting illegally and against international law mm-hmm. so uh, Russia was and is completely within its legal rights to operate uh, in Syria uh, and what Turkey has done is actually to create a crisis situation uh, that has the potential of uh, blowing up into something very very serious mm-hmm. because after the russian plane was downed and uh, one of its pilot pilots was actually killed yeah. by these so called turkmen and other rebel groups yeah a criminal uh, act absolute, a murder criminal act. absolutely it was a murder it was a, because you know uh, a pilot cannot be killed like that and mm-hmm. incidentally yesterday the turkish government handed over the body of that pilot to uh russian officials uh, it had been uh, you know it was well mm-hmm. established that the plane had uh, crashed inside syrian territory the pilots had both uh, landed uh, inside syrian territory one of the pilots was rescued by syrian and and uh, russian commandos yes. but the other unfortunately fell in the hands of these uh, terrorist groups and he was murdered in cold blood mm-hmm. uh, so this has escalated the situation tremendously because Syria has now deployed S400 missiles and these are absolutely lethal missiles uh, that mm-hmm. have a range of about 250 kilometers and what we read today was that both Turkey and the United States have suspended their flights over Syria mm-hmm. and and they have suspended their attacks against Uh, these were just not really anything significant mm-hmm. basically they were sort of you know playing games a demonstration that they could do it that's yeah. correct yeah so now they have stopped those not as anymore well. not anymore because uh, you know russia has served notice that mm-hmm. it's serious and that it's going to next time uh, it faces any yeah. threat or challenge like that that it's going to and does this and does this crisis now. indicate that uh, the syrian army is being successful with that air support and and is close to sealing that border Yes exactly you see th- this is this is the thing that you know often um, many people talk about or commentators say that well uh, an air force alone cannot uh, defeat uh, the terrorists which is true but in in Syria's case if uh, the russian air force helps them then the syrian army is able to uh, carry out ground operations and they are making significant yes. progress in that area uh, nato nato and it permitted the terrorists to take over libya by providing air support exactly so two can play that game the good guys can also have an air force and take care of the terrorists exactly and and the the, the turkish government's um, other concern of course is that um, it is well known and it is now established it was like you know, this is one of the things that really um irked erdogan and that was that uh russian planes were targeting a convoy of hundreds of oil tankers uh, that were taking oil from syria from syrian you know places mm-hmm. oil wells etc and this has been going on for years and uh-huh. those uh, trucks head straight into turkey and turkey then markets that oil on the international market and Erdogan's own family is involved in it his let son, me give yes. let me give you the yeah, exactly his son yes. bilal mm-hmm. he owns a shipping company which incidentally is not registered in turkey because he wants to avoid the taxes he's a panamanian yes <laughs> <laughs> and um, erdogan has just appointed his own son in law um uh, <laughs> berat al bayrak who is now the uh, now turkey's energy minister <laughs> that i can tell you in 2010 when i was in turkey and i met a lot of people and they were telling me that uh, erdogan's son in law is very influential with him uh, you know erdogan mm-hmm. listens to his son in law and so now he has been appointed energy minister and incidentally he was appointed energy minister the same day that turkey shot down that russian plane and mm-hmm. so his son as well as son in law are involved in this illegal act and i say that it is illegal because there is a security council resolution 
that was passed on February the 12th, 2015. It is Security Council Resolution 2199, which expressly forbids any dealing, trading of oil or any other goods with these terrorist groups. And yet Turkey is openly doing that, and that is why it got so upset when Russia went after these convoys to bomb them out of existence. Very important story. This is Zafar Bengesh, uh, Crescent, hyphen, online dot net. Uh, Zafar, there's also been shocking news. That I want your comment on the suddenly the European Union loves Turkey and they say, well, we're going to now think about you as a member again. We've, we've dusted off your uh, application and we're also going to give you billions of dollars. Now, this is all becoming news when the blood of the Russian pilot is not dry. That's correct, yes. In fact, is uh, that a reward? The European, exactly. The European Union has said that we are going to give you 3 billion euros. That is about, I guess, um, uh, more than 4 billion U.S. dollars. When you have uh, conduct like that, yeah. and they don't say, well, no, look, we're going to put this all on hold. You shot down a Russian airplane? Right, right. Uh, you see, uh, uh, you know, it was, it, what was really uh, very shocking was that um, uh, the day after the Russian plane was shot down, uh, Barack Obama said that, well, uh, Turkey has the right to uh, defend its airspace, uh, alleging that uh, Russian, the Russian plane had uh, violated Turkish airspace. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even the map that Turkey itself published, there is a tiny sliver of Turkish territory that uh, uh, juts into Syria. And they showed a, a line across there. And even if, this, if the Russian plane had flown over that area, this, this, it could not have been more than a few seconds. 17 is the top. Exactly. <laughs> 17 now, obviously, seconds. Exactly. And you don't shoot down a, a country's plane because it violated your airspace for 17 seconds, if at all. Although, mm -hmm. you know, the Russians insist that they never entered yeah. Turkish airspace. They exactly. Either way, the conduct is... is uh, Barbaric. Absolutely. But apparently exactly. you have to be a barbarian to join the European Union. <laughs> I mean, it's like you've met our standards. You have That's killed correct. a Russian. That's right, yes. I mean, that, that seems to me just like one equals one. It's, biz it's absolutely bizarre. Um, well, that, I, that, that's exactly what I, I think the, the way I read the situation is that uh, the European Union, as well as the United States and Turkey, they are now in panic mode because... Mm -hmm. uh, they are being exposed uh, in what they are doing in Syria um, with, with the Russian involvement there because the Russians are serious. They really want to go after these people and elim eliminate this threat, which, mm -hmm. which, you know, on the one hand, uh, the Europeans are saying that they are a threat to us, like, you know, the French president uh, is saying that we are going to go after them seriously. And on the other hand, they go around and dish out 3 billion euros to Turkey for shooting down a Russian plane. Yes. So that, you know, they... These things just don't add up. There is something missing from this whole equation. Except only if they do add up, they add up to an, a, a bloody conspiracy against the Syrian government. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Uh, Zafar, it's uh, wonderful talking to you. Crescent-online.net. I feel much wiser now. Thank you very, very much. It's my great pleasure, Phil. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. That's Zafar Bengesh, and it is crescent-online.net.